In The Foundations of Mathematics, von Neumann Bernays Gödel set theory (NBG) is an axiomatic set theory that is a conservative extension of Zermelo Frankel set theory (ZFC). NBG introduces the notion of class, which is a collection of sets defined by a formula whose quantifiers range only over sets. NBG can define classes that are larger than sets, such as the class of all sets and the class of all ordinals. Morse-Kelly set theory MK allows classes to be defined by formulas whose quantifiers range over classes. NBG is finitely axiomatizable, while ZFC and MK are not. A key theorem of NBG is the class existence theorem, which states that for every formula whose quantifiers range only over sets, there is a class consisting of the sets satisfying the formula. This class is built by mirroring the step-by-step -step construction of the formula with classes. Since all set theoretic formulas are constructed from two kinds of atomic formulas membership and equality and finitely many logical symbols, only finitely many axioms are needed to build the classes satisfying them. This is why NBG is finitely axiomatizable. Classes are also used for other constructions, for handling the set theoretic paradoxes, and for stating the axiom of global choice, which is stronger than ZFC's axiom of choice. John von Neumann introduced classes into set theory in 1925. The primitive notions of his theory were function and argument. Using these notions, he defined class and set. Paul Bernays reformulated von Neumann's theory by taking class and set as primitive notions. Kurt Gödel simplified Bernays' theory for his relative consistency proof of the axiom of choice and the generalized continuum hypothesis. Topic. Classes in set theory Topic. The uses of classes Classes have several uses in NBG They produce a finite axiomatization of set theory. They are used to state a very strong form of the axiom of choice. Namely, the axiom of global choice, there exists a global choice function g g defined on the class of all non-empty sets such that g x element of x g x in x for every non-empty set x x this is stronger than ZFC's axiom of choice for every set S display style S of non-empty sets there exists a choice function f display style f defined on S display style S such that f x element of x display style f x in x for all x element of s display style x in s the set theoretic paradoxes are handled by recognizing that some classes cannot be sets for example assume that the class o r d display style ord of all ordinals is a set then o r d display style ord is a transitive set well ordered by element of display style in so by definition o r d display style ord is an ordinal hence o r d element of o r d display style ord in ord which contradicts element of display style in being a well ordering of o r d display style ord therefore o r d display style ord is not a set because a class that is not a set is called a proper class o r d Display style ord is a proper class. Proper classes are useful in constructions. 
In his proof of the relative consistency of the axiom of global choice and the generalized continuum hypothesis, Gödel used proper classes to build the constructible universe. He constructed a function on the class of all ordinals that, for each ordinal, builds a constructible set by applying a set-building operation to previously constructed sets. The constructible universe is the image of this function. Topic. Axiom schema versus class existence theorem Once classes are added to the language, it is simple to axiomatize a set theory with classes that is similar to ZFC. First, the axiom schema of class comprehension is added. This axiom schema states, for every formula phi x 1 x n Display style phi x underscore one l dots x underscore n. That quantifies only over sets. There exists a class a display style a consisting of the n display style n tuples satisfying the formula that as x one x n x one x n element of a phi x 1 x n display style for all x underscore 1 c d o t s for all x underscore n x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n in a i f f phi x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n then the axiom schema of replacement is replaced by a single axiom that uses a class. Finally, ZFC's axiom of extensionality is modified to handle classes. If two classes have the same elements, then they are identical. The other axioms of ZFC are not modified. This theory is not finitely axiomatized. ZFC's replacement schema has been replaced by a single axiom, but the axiom schema of class comprehension has been introduced. To produce a theory with finitely many axioms, the axiom schema of class comprehension must be replaced with a class existence theorem that makes the same statement. For every formula that quantifies only over sets, there exists a class of n tuples satisfying it. The proof of this theorem, which is given below, requires only finitely many class existence axioms to translate the construction of a formula into a construction of the class satisfying the formula. Topic. Axiomatization of NBG Topic. Classes and sets NBG has two types of objects, classes and sets. Intuitively, every set is also a class. There are two ways to axiomatize this. Bernays used many sorted logic with two sorts, classes and sets. Gödel avoided sorts by introducing primitive predicates C L S A display style math frac C L's A for a display style A is a class and M A display style math frac M A for a display style A is a set. In German, set is menge. He also introduced axioms stating that every set is a class and that if class a display style a is a member of a class, then a display style a is a set. Using predicates is the standard way to eliminate sorts. Eliot Mendelssohn modified Gödel's approach by having everything be a class and defining the set predicate m. A display style M A as C A element of C display style exists C A in C. This modification eliminates Gödel's class predicate and his two axioms. Bernays' two-sorted approach may appear more natural at first, but it creates a more complex theory. In Bernays' theory, every set has two representations, one is a set and the other is a class. 
Also, there are two membership relations, the first, denoted by element of, is between two sets, the second, denoted by eta, is between a set and a class. This redundancy is required by many sorted logic because variables of different sorts range over disjoint subdomains of the domain of discourse. The differences between these two approaches does not affect what can be proved, but it does affect how statements are written. In Gödel's approach, a element of C display style A in C, where a display style A and C display style C are classes as a valid statement. In Bernays' approach, this statement has no meaning. However, if a display style A is a set there is an equivalent statement defined set a display style a represents class a display style a if they have the same sets as members that is x x element of a x eta a display style for all x x in a iffx eta a the statement a eta c display style a eta c where set a display style a represents class a display style a is equivalent to godel's a element of c display style a in c the approach adopted in this article is that of Gödel with Mendelssohn's modification. This means that NBG is an axiomatic system in first-order predicate logic with equality, and its only primitive notions are class and the membership relation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Definitions and axioms of extensionality and pairing. A set is a class that belongs to at least one class. Display style A is a set if and only if C A element of C display style exists C A in C. A class that is not a set is called a proper class. A display style A is a proper class if and only if C A C Display style for all C A note in C. Therefore, every class is either a set or a proper class, and no class is both if the theory is consistent. Gödel introduced the convention that uppercase variables range over classes, while lowercase variables range over sets. Gödel also used names that begin with an uppercase letter to denote particular classes, including functions and relations defined on the class of all sets. Gödel's convention is used in this article. It allows us to write The following axioms and definitions are needed for the proof of the class existence theorem. Axiom of extensionality, if two classes have the same elements, then they are identical. A B X X element of A X element of B A equals B Display style for all a for all b for all x x in a i f f x in b implies a equals b. This axiom generalizes ZFC's axiom of extensionality to classes. Axiom of pairing: if x display style x and y display style y are sets, then there exists a set P display style P whose only members are x display style x and y display style y x y p z z element of p z equals x z equals y Display style for all x for all y exists p for all z z in p i f f z equals x lor z equals y 
As in ZFC, the axiom of extensionality implies the uniqueness of the set P P which allows us to introduce the notation x y display style x y ordered pairs are defined by x y equals x x y display style x y equals x x y tuples are defined inductively using ordered pairs x 1 equals x 1 display style x underscore 1 equals x underscore 1 for n greater than 1 x 1 x n minus 1 x n equals x 1 x n minus 1 x n display style text for n greater than 1 sad face x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n 1 x underscore n equals x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n 1 x underscore n topic class existence axioms and axiom of regularity The class existence axioms will be used to prove the class existence theorem for every formula in n display style n free set variables that quantifies only over sets there exists a class of n display style n tuples that satisfy it the following example starts with two classes that are functions and builds a composite function this example illustrates the techniques used to prove the class existence theorem, and hence the types of class existence axioms that are needed. The class existence axioms are divided into two groups, axioms handling language primitives and axioms handling tuples. There are four axioms in the first group and three axioms in the second group, axioms for handling language primitives. Membership, there exists a class E display style E containing all the ordered pairs whose first component is a member of the second component e x y x y element of e x element of y display style exists e for all x for all y x y in e i f f x in y intersection conjunction for any two classes display style a and b display style b there is a class c display style c consisting precisely of the sets that belong to both a display style a and b display style b a b c x x element of c x element of a x element of b display style for all a for all b exists c for all x x in c i f f x in a land x in b complement negation for any class a display style a there is a class b display style b consisting precisely of the sets not belonging to a display style a a b x x element of b x element of a display style for all a exists b for all x x in b i f f neg x in a domain existential quantifier for any class a display style a there is a class b display style b consisting precisely of the first components of the ordered pairs of a display style a b 
x x element of b y x y element of a display style for all a exists b for all x x in b i f f exists y x y in a by the axiom of extensionality class c display style c in the intersection axiom and class b display style b in the complement and domain axioms are unique they will be denoted by a b display style a cap b a display style complement a and d o m a display style dom a respectively on the other hand extensionality is not applicable to e display style e in the membership axiom since it specifies only those sets in e display style e that are ordered pairs the first 3 axioms imply the existence of the empty class and the class of all sets the membership axiom implies the existence of a class e display style e the intersection and complement axioms imply the existence of e e display style e cap complement e which is empty by the axiom of extensionality this class is unique it is denoted by display style empty set the complement of display style empty set is the class v display style v of all sets which is also unique by extensionality the set predicate m a display style m a which was defined as c a element of c display style exists c a in c is now redefined as a element of v display style a in v to avoid quantifying over classes axioms for handling tuples product by v display style v for any class a display style a there is a class b display style b consisting precisely of the ordered pairs whose first component belongs to a display style a B U U element of B X Y U equals X Y X element of a display style for all a exists B for all U U in B I F F exists X exists Y U equals X Y land X in a circular permutation for any class a display style a there is a class b display style b whose three tuples are obtained by applying the circular permutation y z x x y z display style y z x mapsto x y z to the three tuples of a display style a a b x y z x y z element of b y z x element of Display style for all a exists b for all x for all y for all z x y z in b i f f y z x in a transposition for any class a display style a there is a class b display style b whose three tuples are obtained by transposing the last two components of the three tuples of a display style a b x y 
z x y z element of b x z y element of o display style for all a exists b for all x for all y for all z x y z in b i f f x z y in a by extensionality the product by v display style v axiom implies the existence of a unique class which is denoted by a times v display style a times v this axiom is used to define the class v n display style v caret n of all n display style n tuples v 1 equals v display style v caret 1 equals v and v n plus 1 equals v n times v display style v caret n plus 1 equals v caret n times v if a display style a is a class extensionality implies that a v n display style a cap v caret n is the unique class consisting of the n display style n tuples of a display style a for example the membership axiom produces a class e display style e that may contain elements that are not ordered pairs while the intersection e v 2 display style e cap v caret 2 contains only the ordered pairs of e display style e the circular permutation and transposition axioms do not imply the existence of unique classes because they specify only the three tuples of class b display style b by specifying the three tuples these axioms also specify the n display style n tuples for n 4 display style n geq 4 since x 1 x n minus 2 x n minus 1 x n equals x 1 x n minus 2 x n minus 1 x n Display style x underscore one L dots x underscore N two x underscore N one x underscore N equals x underscore one L dots x underscore N two x underscore N one x underscore N. The axioms for handling tuples and the domain axiom imply the following lemma, which is used in the proof of the class existence theorem. Tuple lemma O B one x y z z x y element of b 1 x y element of a display style for all a exists b underscore 1 for all x for all y for all z z x y in b underscore 1 i f f x y in a a b 2 x y z x z y element of b 2 x y element of a Display style for all a exists b underscore two for all x for all y for all z x z y in b underscore two i f f x y in a a b three x y z 
x y z element of b 3 x y element of Display style for all a exists b underscore three for all x for all y for all z x y z in b underscore three i f f x y in a a b four x y z y x element of b four x y element of Display style for all a exists b underscore four for all x for all y for all z y x in b underscore four i f f x y in a proof class b three display style b underscore three apply product by v display style v two a display style a to produce B three display style B underscore three class B two display style B underscore two apply transposition to B three display style B underscore three to produce B two display style B underscore two class B one display style B underscore one apply circular permutation to B three display style B underscore three to produce B one display style B underscore one class B four display style B underscore four Apply circular permutation to B two display style B underscore two. Then apply domain to produce B four display style B underscore four. One more axiom is needed to prove the class existence theorem, the axiom of regularity. Since the existence of the empty class has been proved, the usual statement of this axiom is given: axiom of regularity. Every non-empty set has at least one element with which it has no element in common. A A does not equal U U element of A U A equals display style for all A A N E Q empty set implies exists U U in a land U kappa equals empty set. This axiom implies that a set cannot belong to itself. Assume that x element of x display style x in x and let a equals x display style a equals x then x a does not equal display style x kappa neq empty set since x element of x a display style x in x cap a this contradicts the axiom of regularity because x display style x is the only element in a display style a therefore x x display style x note in x the axiom of regularity also prohibits infinite descending membership sequences. Element of x n plus one element of x n element of element of x one element of x zero Display style c d o t s in x underscore n plus one in x underscore n in c d o t s in x underscore one in x underscore zero. Gödel stated regularity for classes rather than for sets in his 1940 monograph, which was based on lectures given in 1938. 
In 1939, he proved that regularity for sets implies regularity for classes. Topic: <laughs> Class existence theorem. Class existence theorem. Let phi x 1 x n y 1 y m Display style phi x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m be a formula that quantifies only over sets and contains no free variables other than x one x n y one y m Display style x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m. Not necessarily all of these. Then for all y one y m. Display style y underscore one dots y underscore m. There exists a unique class a display style a of n. Display style n tuples such that x one x n x one x n element of a phi x one x n y one y m Display style for all x underscore one c d o t s for all x underscore n x underscore one dots x underscore n in a i f f phi x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m. The class a display style a is denoted by x one x n phi x 1 x n y 1 y m display style x underscore 1 dots x underscore n phi x underscore 1 dots x underscore n y underscore 1 dots y underscore m the theorem's proof will be done in two steps transformation rules are used to transform the given formula Phi display style phi into a equivalent formula that simplifies the inductive part of the proof. For example, the only logical symbols in the transformed formula are display style neg display style land and display style exists. So the induction handles logical symbols with just three cases. The class existence theorem is proved inductively for transformed formulas. Guided by the structure of the transformed formula, the class existence axioms are used to produce the unique class of n n tuples satisfying the formula, transformation rules, in rules 1 and 2 delta display style delta and gamma display style gamma denote set or class variables. These two rules eliminate all occurrences of class variables before an element of display style in and all occurrences of equality. Each time rule one or two is applied to a subformula, i display style i is chosen so that z i display style z underscore i differs from the other variables in the current formula. The three rules are repeated until there are no subformulas to which they can be applied. This produces a formula that is built only with display style neg display style land display style exists element of display style in set variables and class variables y k display style y underscore k where y K display style y underscore k does not appear before an element of display style in 
y k element of gamma display style y underscore k in gamma is transformed into z i z i equals y k z i element of gamma display style exists z underscore i z underscore i equals y underscore k land z underscore i in gamma extensionality is used to transform delta equals gamma display style delta equals gamma into z i z i element of delta z i element of gamma display style for all z underscore i z underscore i in delta i f f z underscore i in gamma logical identities are used to transform subformulas containing display style lore implies i f f and display style for all to subformulas that only use display style neg land and display style exists transformation rules bound variables consider the composite function formula of example 1 with its free set variables replaced by x 1 display style x underscore 1 and x 2 display style x underscore 2 t x 1 t element of f t x 2 element of g display style exists t x underscore 1 t in f land t x underscore 2 in g the inductive proof will remove t display style exists t which produces the formula x 1 t element of f t x 2 element of g display style x underscore 1 t in f land t x underscore 2 in g however since the class existence theorem is stated for subscripted variables this formula does not have the form expected by the induction hypothesis this problem is solved by replacing the variable t display style t with x 3 display style x underscore 3 bound variables within nested quantifiers are handled by increasing the subscript by one for each successive quantifier this leads to rule 4 which must be applied after the other rules since rules 1 and 2 produce quantified variables if a formula contains no free set variables other than x 1 x n display style x underscore 1 dots x underscore n then bound variables that are nested within q display style q quantifiers are replaced with x n plus q display style x underscore n plus q these variables have quantifier nesting depth q display style q proof of the class existence theorem the proof starts by applying the transformation rules to the given formula to produce a transformed formula since this formula is equivalent to the given formula the proof is completed by proving the class existence theorem for transformed formulas godel pointed out that the class existence theorem is a meta theorem that is a theorem about the system nbg not in the system it is a theorem about NBG because it is proved in the meta theory by induction on NBG formulas. Also, its proof, instead of invoking finitely many NBG axioms, inductively describes how to use NBG axioms to construct a class satisfying a given formula. For every formula, this description can be turned into a constructive existence proof that is in NBG. Therefore, this meta theorem can generate infinitely many NBG proofs. 
A recursive computer program succinctly captures the construction of a class from a given formula. The definition of this program does not depend on the proof of the class existence theorem. However, this proof is needed to prove that the class constructed by the program satisfies the given formula and is built using the axioms. This program is written in pseudocode that uses a Pascal-style case statement. F U N C T I O N class phi n display style math bf function text class phi n i n p u t phi is a transformed formula of the form phi x 1 x n y 1 y M N specifies that a class of N tuples is returned. O U T P U T class of of N tuples satisfying X one X N X one X N element of a phi X one X N Y one Y M Display style begin aligned math BF input and phi text is a transformed formula of the form phi x underscore one L dots x underscore N Y underscore one L dots Y underscore M and N text specifies that a class of N text tuples is returned math BF output and text class of text of N text tuples satisfying and for all x underscore one C D O T S for all x underscore N x underscore one L dots X underscore N in A I F F Phi X underscore one L dots X underscore N Y underscore one L dots Y underscore M end aligned B E G I N Display style Math BF begin C A S E Phi O F display style math bf case phi math bf of x i element of x j r e t u r n e i j n e i j N equals X one X N X I element of X J X I element of Y K R E T U R N E I Y K N E I Y K N equals X one X N X I element of Y K Psi R E T U R N V N class Psi N V N class Psi N equals V N class Psi N Psi one Psi two, 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 two
2 r e t u r n class psi 1 n class psi 2 n x n plus 1 psi r e t u r n d o m class psi n plus 1 X n plus one is free in psi class psi n plus one returns a class of n plus one tuples display style begin aligned at two x underscore i in x underscore j and math bf return e underscore i j n and in text e underscore i j n equals x underscore one dots x underscore n x underscore i in x underscore j x underscore i in y underscore k and math bf return e underscore i Y underscore K N and then text E underscore I Y underscore K N equals X underscore one dots X underscore N X underscore I in Y underscore K neg psi and Math BF return complement underscore V carrot N text class psi N and then text complement underscore V carrot N text class psi N equals V carrot N set minus text class psi N psi underscore one land psi underscore two and math bf return text class psi underscore one n cap text class psi underscore two n and n exists x underscore n plus one psi and math bf return dom text class psi n plus one and n text x underscore n plus one text is free in psi text class psi n plus one and an n text returns a class of n plus one text tuples end aligned at e n d display style math bf end e n d display style math bf and let phi display style phi be the formula of example two. The function call o equals c l a s s phi one display style a equals class phi one generates the class a display style a which is compared below with phi display style phi this shows that the construction of the class a display style a mirrors the construction of its defining formula phi display style phi phi equals x 2 x 2 element of x 1 x 3 x 3 element of x 2 x 2 x 2 element of x 1 x 3 x 3 element of x 2 x 4 x 4 element of x 3 a equals d o m e 2 1 2 v 2 d o m e 3 2 3 DOM E2 1 2 DOM E3 2 3 V3 DOM E4 3 4 display style begin aligned at 2 and phi and an equals exists x underscore 2 x underscore 2 in x underscore 1 land neg exists x underscore 3 x underscore 3 in x underscore 2 land exists x underscore 2 x underscore 2 in x underscore 1 land exists x underscore 3 x underscore 3 
in x underscore two land neg exists x underscore four x underscore four in x underscore three and a and an equals dom e underscore two one two cap complement underscore v carrot two dom e underscore three two three winking face cap dom e underscore two one two cap dom e underscore three two three cap complement underscore v carrot three dom e underscore four three four winking face end aligned at Topic. Extending the class existence theorem Gödel extended the class existence theorem to formulas phi, phi containing relations over classes such as y 1 y 2 display style y underscore 1 subsetec y underscore 2 and the unary relation M Y one Display style M Y underscore one Special classes such as O R D Display style ord and operations such as X one X two Display style X underscore one X underscore two and X one Y one Display style x underscore one cap y underscore one. To extend the class existence theorem, the formulas defining relations, special classes, and operations must quantify only over sets. Then phi Display style phi can be transformed into an equivalent formula satisfying the hypothesis of the class existence theorem. The following definitions specify how formulas define relations, special classes, and operations. A relation R display style R is defined by R Z 1 Z K psi R Z 1 Z K Display style R Z underscore one dots Z underscore K I F F Psi underscore R Z underscore one dots Z underscore K A special class C Display style C is defined by U element of C Psi C U Display style u in C I F F psi underscore C U. An operation P display style P is defined by U element of P Z one Z K psi P U Z one Z K display style u in P Z underscore one dots Z underscore K I F F psi underscore P U Z underscore one dots Z underscore K A term is defined by variables and special classes are terms. If P display style P is an operation with K display style K arguments and gamma 1 gamma K display style gamma underscore 1 dots gamma underscore K are terms then P gamma 1 gamma K display style P gamma underscore 1 dots gamma underscore K is a term the following transformation rules eliminate relations, special classes, and operations. Each time rule 2b, 3b, or 4 is applied to a subformula, i display style i is chosen so that z i display style z underscore i differs from the other variables in the current formula. The rules are repeated until there are no subformulas to which they can be applied. Gamma one gamma 
k gamma display style gamma underscore one dots gamma underscore k gamma and delta display style delta denote terms class existence theorem extended version let phi x one x n y one y m display style phi x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m be a formula that quantifies only over sets contains no free variables other than x one x n y one y m display style x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m and may contain relations special classes and operations defined by formulas that quantify only over sets then for all y one y m display style y underscore one dots y underscore m there exists a unique class a display style a of n display style n tuples such that x 1 x n x 1 x n element of a phi x 1 x n y 1 y m display style for all x underscore 1 c d o t s for all x underscore n x underscore 1 dots x underscore n in a i f f phi x underscore 1 dots x underscore n y underscore 1 dots y underscore m proof apply the transformation rules to phi display style phi to produce an equivalent formula containing no relations, special classes, or operations. This formula satisfies the hypothesis of the class existence theorem. Therefore, for all y 1 y m displaystyle y underscore 1 dots y underscore m there is a unique class a displaystyle a of n Display style n tuples satisfying x one x n x one x n element of a phi x one x n y one y m Display style for all x underscore one c d o t s for all x underscore n x underscore one dots x underscore n in a i f f phi x underscore one dots x underscore n y underscore one dots y underscore m. Topic: Set axioms. The axioms of pairing and regularity, which were needed for the proof of the class existence theorem, have been given above. NBG contains four other set axioms. Three of these axioms deal with class operations being applied to sets. Definition f is a function if f v 2 x y z x y element of f x z element of f y equals z display style f subset v caret 2 land for all x for all y for all z x y in f land x z in f implies y equals z in set theory, the definition of a function does not require specifying the domain or codomain of the function see function set theory. 
NBG's definition of function generalizes ZFC's definition from a set of ordered pairs to a class of ordered pairs. ZFC's definitions of the set operations, image, union, and power set are also generalized to class operations. The image of class a display style a under the function f display style f is f a equals y x x element of a x y element of f Display style f a equals y exists x x in a land x y in f. This definition does not require that a d o m f display style a subset f. The union of class a display style a is a equals x y x element of y y element of a display style cup a equals x exists y x in y land y in a the power class of a display style a is p a equals x x Display style math call p a equals x x subset a. The extended version of the class existence theorem implies the existence of these classes. The axioms of replacement, union, and power set imply that when these operations are applied to sets, they produce sets. Axiom of replacement: if f display style f is a function and a display style a is a set, then f a display style f a the image of a display style a under f display style f is a set f a f is a function b y y element of b x x element of a x y element of f display style for all f for all a f text is a function implies exists b for all y y in b i f f exists x x in a land x y in f not having the requirement a d o m f Display style a subset dom f in the definition of f a display style f a produces a stronger axiom of replacement, which is used in the following proof theorem NBG's axiom of separation: if a display style a is a set and b display style b is a subclass of a display style a then b display style b is a set proof the class existence theorem constructs the restriction of the identity function to b display style b i b equals x 1 x 2 x 1 element of B x two equals x one display style i up harpoon right underscore b equals x underscore one x underscore two x underscore one in b land x underscore two equals x underscore one. Since the image of a display style a under i b display style i up harpoon right underscore b is b display style b the axiom of replacement implies that b display style b 
is a set. This proof depends on the definition of image not having the requirement a d o m f display style a subset dom f since d o m i b equals b o display style dom i up harpoon right underscore b equals b subset a rather than a d o m i b display style a subset dom i up harpoon right underscore b axiom of union if a display style a is a set then there is a set containing a display style cup a a b x y x element of y y element of a x element of b Display style for all a exists b for all x exists y x in y land y in a implies x in b. Axiom of power set. If a display style a is a set, then there is a set containing p a display style math call p a a b x x a x element of b display style for all a exists b for all x x subset a implies x in b theorem if a display style a is a set then a display style cup a and p a display style math call p a our sets proof the axiom of union states that a display style cup a is a subclass of a set b display style b so the axiom of separation implies a display style cup a is a set likewise the axiom of power set states that p a display style math call p a is a subclass of a set b display style b so the axiom of separation implies that p a display style math call p a is a set axiom of infinity there exists a non-empty set a display style a such that for all x display style x in a display style a there exists a y display style y in a display style a such that x display style x is a proper subset of y display style y a u u element of a x x element of a y y element of a x y Display style exists a exists u u in a land for all x x in a implies exists y y in a land x subset y. The axioms of infinity and replacement prove the existence of the empty set. In the discussion of the class existence axioms, the existence of the empty class display style empty set was proved. We now prove that display style empty set is a set. Let function f equals display style f equals empty set, and let a display style a be the set given by the axiom of infinity. By replacement, the image of a display style a under f display style f, which equals display style empty set, is a set. 
NBG's axiom of infinity is implied by ZFC's axiom of infinity. A element of a x x element of a x x element of a display style exists a empty set in a land for all x x in a implies x cup x in a the first conjunct of ZFC's axiom element of a display style empty set in a implies the first conjunct of NBG's axiom. The second conjunct of ZFC's axiom x x element of a x x element of Display style for all x x in a implies x cup x in a implies the second conjunct of NBG's axiom since x x x display style x subset x cup x to prove ZFC's axiom of infinity from NBG's axiom of infinity requires some of the other NBG axioms. See weak axiom of infinity. Topic. Axiom of global choice The class concept allows NBG to have a stronger axiom of choice than ZFC. A choice function is a function f defined on a set s of non-empty sets, such that f x element of x Display style f x in x for all x element of s. Display style x in s. ZFC's axiom of choice states that for every set of non-empty sets, there exists a choice function. A global choice function is a function g. Display style g defined on the class of all non-empty sets such that g x element of x display style g x in x for every non-empty set x display style x the axiom of global choice states that there exists a global choice function this axiom implies zfc's axiom of choice since for every set s display style s of non-empty sets g s Display style g vert underscore s. The restriction of g. Display style g to s. Display style s is a choice function for s. Display style s. In 1964, William B. Easton proved that global choice is stronger than the axiom of choice by using forcing to construct a model that satisfies the axiom of choice and all the axioms of NBG except the axiom of global choice. The axiom of global choice is equivalent to every class having a well ordering, while ZFC's axiom of choice is equivalent to every set having a well ordering. Axiom of global choice there exists a function that chooses an element from every non empty set. G G is a function x x does not equal y y element of x x y element of G display style exists G G text is a function land for all X X n eq empty set implies exists y y in X land X y in G topic history topic von Neumann's 1925 axiom system Von Neumann published an introductory article on his axiom system in 1925. In 1928, he provided a detailed treatment of his system. Von Neumann based his axiom system on two domains of primitive objects, functions and arguments. These domains overlap—objects that are in both domains are called argument functions. 
Functions correspond to classes in NBG, and argument functions correspond to sets. Von Neumann's primitive operation is function application, denoted by a, x rather than a, x, where a is a function and x is an argument. This operation produces an argument. Von Neumann defined classes and sets using functions and argument functions that take only two values, a and b. He defined x element of a if a, x does not equal a. Von Neumann's work in set theory was influenced by Georg Cantor's articles, Ernst Zermelo's 1908 axioms for set theory, and the 1922 critiques of Zermelo's set theory that were given independently by Abraham Frankel and Thoralf Skolem. Both Frankel and Skolem pointed out that Zermelo's axioms cannot prove the existence of the set Z0, Z1, Z2, where Z0 is the set of natural numbers and Zn plus 1 is the power set of Zn. They then introduced the axiom of replacement, which would guarantee the existence of such sets. However, they were reluctant to adopt this axiom, Frankel stated, that replacement was too strong an axiom for general set theory. While Skolem only wrote that we could introduce replacement. Von Neumann worked on the problems of Zermelo set theory and provided solutions for some of them. A theory of ordinals. Problem: Cantor's theory of ordinal numbers cannot be developed in Zermelo set theory because it lacks the axiom of replacement. Solution: Von Neumann recovered Cantor's theory by defining the ordinals using sets that are well ordered by the element of relation, and by using the axiom of replacement to prove key theorems about the ordinals, such as every well ordered set is order isomorphic with an ordinal. In contrast to Frankel and Skolem, von Neumann emphasized how important the replacement axiom is for set theory. In fact, I believe that no theory of ordinals is possible at all without this axiom. A criterion identifying classes that are too large to be sets Problem, Zermelo did not provide such a criterion. His set theory avoids the large classes that lead to the paradoxes, but it leaves out many sets, such as the one mentioned by Frankel and Skolem. Solution, von Neumann introduced the criterion, a class is too large to be a set if and only if it can be mapped onto the class 5 of all sets. Von Neumann realized that the set theoretic paradoxes could be avoided by not allowing such large classes to be members of any class. Combining this restriction with his criterion, he obtained his axiom of limitation of size. A class C is not a member of any class if and only if C can be mapped onto V. Finite axiomatization Problem, Zermelo had used the imprecise concept of definite propositional function in his axiom of separation. Solutions. Skolem introduced the axiom schema of separation that was later used in ZFC, and Frankel introduced an equivalent solution. However, Zermelo rejected both approaches, particularly because they implicitly involved the concept of natural number, which, in Zermelo's view, should be based upon set theory. Von Neumann avoided axiom schemas by formalizing the concept of definite propositional function with his functions, whose construction requires only finitely many axioms. This led to his set theory having finitely many axioms. In 1961, Richard Montague proved that ZFC cannot be finitely axiomatized. The axiom of regularity Problem, Zermelo set theory starts with the empty set and an infinite set, and iterates the axioms of pairing, union, power set, separation, and choice to generate new sets. However, it does not restrict sets to these. For example, it allows sets that are not well-founded, such as a set X satisfying X element of X. Solutions: Frankel introduced an axiom to exclude these sets. Von Neumann analyzed Frankel's axiom and stated that it was not precisely formulated, but it would approximately say, besides the sets, whose existence is absolutely required by the axioms, there are no further sets. Von Neumann proposed the axiom of regularity as a way to exclude non-well-founded sets, but did not include it in his axiom system. In 1930, Zermelo became the first to publish an axiom system that included regularity. Topic: <laughs> Von Neumann's 1929 axiom system. In 1929, von Neumann published an article containing the axioms that would lead to NBG. This article was motivated by his concern about the consistency of the axiom of limitation of size. He stated that this axiom, 
does a lot, actually too much, besides implying the axioms of separation and replacement, and the well ordering theorem, it also implies that any class whose cardinality is less than that of V is a set. Von Neumann thought that this last implication went beyond Cantorian set theory and concluded, we must therefore discuss whether it's the axioms consistency is not even more problematic than an axiomatization of set theory that does not go beyond the necessary Cantorian framework. Von Neumann started his consistency investigation by introducing his 1929 axiom system, which contains all the axioms of his 1925 axiom system except the axiom of limitation of size. He replaced this axiom with two of its consequences, the axiom of replacement and a choice axiom. Von Neumann's choice axiom states, Every relation R has a subclass that is a function with the same domain as R. Let S be von Neumann's 1929 axiom system. Von Neumann introduced the axiom system S plus regularity which consists of S and the axiom of regularity to demonstrate that his 1925 system is consistent relative to S. He proved if S is consistent, then S plus regularity is consistent. S plus regularity implies the axiom of limitation of size. Since this is the only axiom of his 1925 axiom system that S plus regularity does not have, S plus regularity implies all the axioms of his 1925 system. These results imply, if S is consistent, then von Neumann's 1925 axiom system is consistent. Proof, if S is consistent, then S plus regularity is consistent result 1. Using proof by contradiction, assume that the 1925 axiom system is inconsistent, or equivalently, the 1925 axiom system implies a contradiction. Since S plus regularity implies the axioms of the 1925 system result 2, S plus regularity also implies a contradiction. However, this contradicts the consistency of S plus regularity. Therefore, if S is consistent, then von Neumann's 1925 axiom system is consistent. Since S is his 1929 axiom system, von Neumann's 1925 axiom system is consistent relative to his 1929 axiom system, which is closer to Cantorian set theory. The major differences between Cantorian set theory and the 1929 axiom system are classes and von Neumann's choice axiom. The axiom system S plus regularity was modified by Bernays and Gödel to produce the equivalent NBG axiom system. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Bernays axiom system. In 1929, Paul Bernays started modifying von Neumann's new axiom system by taking classes and sets as primitives. He published his work in a series of articles appearing from 1937 to 1954. Bernays stated that The purpose of modifying the von Neumann system is to remain nearer to the structure of the original Zermelo system and to utilize at the same time some of the set theoretic concepts of the Schroeder logic and of Principia Mathematica which have become familiar to logicians. As will be seen, a considerable simplification results from this arrangement. Bernays handled sets and classes in a two-sorted logic and introduced two membership primitives, one for membership in sets and one for membership in classes. With these primitives, he rewrote and simplified von Neumann's 1929 axioms. Bernays also included the axiom of regularity in his axiom system. Topic: <laughs> Gödel's axiom system NBG In 1931, Bernays sent a letter containing his set theory to Kurt Gödel. Gödel simplified Bernays' theory by making every set a class, which allowed him to use just one sort and one membership primitive. He also weakened some of Bernays' axioms and replaced von Neumann's choice axiom with the equivalent axiom of global choice. Gödel used his axioms in his 1940 monograph on the relative consistency of global choice and the generalized continuum hypothesis. Several reasons have been given for Gödel choosing NBG for his monograph. Gödel gave a mathematical reason. NBG's global choice produces a stronger consistency theorem. This stronger form of the axiom of choice, if consistent with the other axioms, implies, of course, that a weaker form is also consistent. Robert Solovey conjectured, My guess is that he Godel wished to avoid a discussion of the technicalities involved in developing the rudiments of model theory within axiomatic set theory. K. 
Kenneth Coonan gave a reason for Gödel avoiding this discussion. There is also a much more combinatorial approach to L, the constructible universe, developed by Gödel in his 1940 monograph in an attempt to explain his work to non-logicians. This approach has the merit of removing all vestiges of logic from the treatment of L. Charles Parsons provided a philosophical reason for Gödel's choice. This view that property of set is a primitive of set theory may be reflected in Gödel's choice of a theory with class variables as the framework for his monograph. Gödel's achievement together with the details of his presentation led to the prominence that NBG would enjoy for the next two decades. In 1963, Paul Cohen proved his independence proofs for ZF with the help of some tools that Gödel had developed for his relative consistency proofs for NBG. Later, ZFC became more popular than NBG. This was caused by several factors, including the extra work required to handle forcing in NBG, Cohen's 1966 presentation of forcing, which used ZF, and the proof that NBG is a conservative extension of ZFC. NBG, ZFC, and MK NBG is not logically equivalent to ZFC because its language is more expressive, it can make statements about classes, which cannot be made in ZFC. However, NBG and ZFC imply the same statements about sets. Therefore, NBG is a conservative extension of ZFC. NBG implies theorems that ZFC does not imply, but since NBG is a conservative extension, these theorems must involve proper classes. For example, NBG implies that the class 5 of all sets can be well ordered and that every proper class can be put into one to one correspondence with V1. Consequence of conservative extension is that ZFC and NBG are equiconsistent. Proving this uses the principle of explosion. From a contradiction, everything is provable. Assume that either ZFC or NBG is inconsistent. Then the inconsistent theory implies the contradictory statements equals and does not equal, which are statements about sets. By the conservative extension property, the other theory also implies these statements. Therefore, it is also inconsistent. So although NBG is more expressive, it is equiconsistent with ZFC. This result together with von Neumann's 1929 relative consistency proof implies that his 1925 axiom system with the axiom of limitation of size is equiconsistent with ZFC. This completely resolves von Neumann's concern about the relative consistency of this powerful axiom since ZFC is within the Cantorian framework. Even though NBG is a conservative extension of ZFC, a theorem may have a shorter and more elegant proof in NBG than in ZFC or vice versa. For a survey of known results of this nature, see Pudlik 1998. Morse-Kelly set theory has an axiom schema of class comprehension that includes formulas whose quantifiers range over classes. MK is a stronger theory than NBG because MK proves the consistency of NBG, while Gödel's second incompleteness theorem implies that NBG cannot prove the consistency of NBG. For a discussion of some ontological and other philosophical issues posed by NBG, especially when contrasted with ZFC and MK, see Appendix C of Potter 2004. Topic: <laughs> Models. ZFC, NBG, and MK have models describable in terms of the cumulative hierarchy V alpha and the constructible hierarchy L alpha. Let V include an inaccessible cardinal kappa and let def X denote the delta zero definable subsets of X see constructible universe. Then V kappa and L kappa are models of ZFC. Def v kappa is a model of Mendelssohn's version of NBG, which replaces global choice by ordinary choice. Def v kappa is not necessarily a model of NBG since global choice might fail. L kappa plus, where kappa plus is the successor cardinal of kappa, is a model of NBG. V kappa plus 1 is a model of MK, which implies that it is also a model of NBG. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Category theory. 
The ontology of NBG provides scaffolding for speaking about large objects without risking paradox. For instance, in some developments of category theory, a large category is defined as one whose objects and morphisms make up a proper class. On the other hand, a small category is one whose objects and morphisms are members of a set. Thus, we can speak of the category of all sets or category of all small categories without risking paradox since NBG supports large categories. However, NBG does not support a category of all categories since large categories would be members of it and NBG does not allow proper classes to be members of anything. An ontological extension that enables us to talk formally about such a category is the conglomerate, which is a collection of classes. Then the category of all categories is defined by its objects, the conglomerate of all categories, and its morphisms, the conglomerate of all morphisms from A to B where A and B are objects. On whether an ontology including classes as well as sets is adequate for category theory, see Muller 2001. <laughs> Notes <laughs>